And uh, the title for this one is Jesus Loves Ribs. And, uh, you know, I used to love ribs, but I really hated the fact that you had to get them all over your fingers and, you know, it was dirty. I mean, you had to wipe them all at the end. And I started going to this place called Texas Roadhouse, and the meat just, the flesh just fell off of the ribs, man. It was, you didn't, you could eat it with a fork. That's the truth. In fact, I think I took Geraldine and Faf last time, uh, November when they were here, and we we went there. Um, anyway, Jesus loves ribs, so I want to have you turn to Genesis chapter two and verse twenty. We'll just read a couple of verses here. <clears throat> and Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found an help fit for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And so we really see the, <clears throat> the first example of uh, really the, the, the biggest picture, I guess, up to that point of, of the cross. Uh, you see, and we've studied these things before, but uh, just coming from this angle, that that was a rib that became the bride for Adam. And uh, it's a particular note that God opened up his side and, um, and brought a rib out of him and made for him a bride. And, um, and then you begin to realize that um, before that time there was a sinless world. There was uh, no devil mentioned, no activity. Um, there was a relationship with God that Adam had, walked with him in the cool of the evening. There was a perfect environment. There was much of the things that everybody's, you know, really desiring and praying for. Oh Lord, you know, sinlessness, and oh Lord, you know, a, 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 almost a utopia type situation. There was all of that, and yet there was no mention of a bride yet. Uh, and the only mention of that is what we just read here, and the only reason why it was not only mentioned but brought to pass was because something, I don't know, and this is, remember this is before the fall, something hurt. There was pain. There was, um, and see, people are looking forward to heaven. No pain, no. But this was a perfect environment. And this is the first mention of any kind of pain. Um, and it wasn't because of sin. It was to bring forth something, uh, a, a counterpart, a one after his kind. And, um, and so you begin to, to comprehend that from this that uh, all the things that we think that are important and all the things that we think or what God wants aren't really. Maybe they're on the way to that, but they're not the end goal. And the end goal relates to this one after his kind. And um, so this is where I got the title, Jesus Loves Ribs, because he wants one after his kind. He wants one that will love him and he can love back. And it will be the same heart and the same spirit and the same kind of love. And um, so just moving along, in Daniel chapter 7, verse 5, we find that the enemy doesn't like ribs. Hmm, wow. Jesus loves ribs, but the, but the enemy does not like ribs. This is Daniel chapter 7, verse 5, and this is a, a vision that Daniel is having of beasts that are coming forth. And this particular one says, And behold, another beast, a second, this is the second one in the line of four that he mentions, uh, another beast, a second, 
like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in its mouth of it between the teeth of it. Um, and they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. And so we find that there is, um, there is, an, uh, there is a beast, there is an enemy that really, it, it's not just, I mean, it devours us because of our flesh, but it does more than that. It devours or it seeks to devour that which is after Jesus' kind. It is anti-Christ and therefore it's anti happiness for Jesus, anything that would please him. Um, and so um, we begin to realize that there are there are two views of ribs, two two attitudes towards the rib. And then of course we, we go to John nineteen verse thirty three and thirty four. Gospel of John 19. And it says, But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. Um, one point, and I'll probably mention it a couple of times after this, but one main point here is that they saw that Jesus was dead already. They saw he was dead already. They shoved a spear into a dead man's side. They didn't put the spear to kill him. They saw he was dead already. Okay, so that's it's important that that Jesus didn't die from a spear in his side. Okay. And then uh, in John twenty, verse twenty. This is Jesus speaking. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. So he shows them his side, you know. And there is this, there is this reality that, uh, and it says this over in Romans chapter 5, that, that, Adam, that uh, Adam was a picture of Christ, but not in the same way. It was, uh, if you read through it, it, it really says, not like Jesus, but it was after the similitude. And, and I believe one of those things is that, that in the clearest sense of God, not that any other application doesn't apply, but in the clearest sense of God that, <clears throat> that Adam's death was like the fall. And what was what he wanted as one with him became two and became outside of him. And this is, I, I think that Romans 5 there is addressing that. Um, and that with Jesus, his side was opened as it were so that we could be brought back in as one. And the two shall be made one. And in that sense, finally, he has one after his kind because it is him. And it's a living rib that is in him and functioning in him and is covering his heart, protecting, protecting his heart. Um, and so uh, I believe, because he didn't, he didn't need to die, he's already dead, why open his side? Because that's what God did in the beginning, opened Adam's side and took something that was in him out of him because he, he didn't understand. He wasn't the Lord. He wasn't the one who would have it the other way around. So God opens his side, and in that death right there, we are made one with Jesus. Um, and then in John, uh, just a few verses down, John 20, verse 24 and 25, But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the prints of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand to his, uh, into his side, I will not believe. All right, well, you know, why do you have to put your hand in his side? First of all, that didn't kill him. So to, to see that or to acknowledge that doesn't mean that he's alive. And maybe Thomas's lack of belief wasn't just in relationship to 
you know, I don't believe Jesus is alive, but he didn't really, he didn't know, he didn't understand that out of that opening we would go in not just stick our hand in there, but we would go in and we would be one. And, and at the resurrection, when Jesus is standing there, we're already one with Jesus. At that point in resurrection, we're one. We're in there. We're in Christ. That's our true position. Ephesians really covers that, but so does the rest of it. We're already in there. Maybe his doubt had to do with not understanding that Jesus loves ribs and that he loves us. And then, um, just one final bunch of scriptures here. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 through 10, uh, 11. It says, We are troubled on every side. We are troubled on every side. That's where the bride was brought forth from. That's where the bride is. That's where the wound took place to bring forth more of her for him, uh, or bring forth her for him uh, in the understanding of God and not in the understanding of Adam. And it says, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. In other words, Jesus was wounded, but he did it with purpose. He, he was, uh, it was worth it to Jesus for what he was going to get out of. So we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So the spear in Jesus' side was a troubling thing, but Jesus was not in despair. And like I said, why? Because, because it was worth it, because that's where he got one after his kind, a rib that is, as it were, returned into oneness and is now found in him and part of him and him and him and not just was him, but now separate from him. And, uh, and then uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 7 says, But we have this treasure, this is just the verse in front of what I just read, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency, the power may be of God, not of us. Uh, this is just before it says, We are troubled on every side. It says, we have this treasure in us, this nature, this, this wounded one who lays down his life in love, who gives himself, who, who um, lives to love and loves, loves to die, to bring forth more. And, uh, and so it says we have this, this, this is the treasure that we have in our earthen vessels and it's worth it to us. We go through things. We are. We think that there's just we're just going through troubles and trials. When in reality, the wounds may be bearing about in our body the dying of the Lord Jesus, and we are troubled on every side. Every where our, our sides are being opened, as it were. But we're not perplexed. We're not in despair. We know that this is happening with purpose. It's forming us more and more into His image. It, we're, we're learning to bear about in our bodies the dying of the Lord Jesus, the same as He did for us. And we're doing that with Him and for Him. And we've got we look at it like a treasure. This is a treasure. This is you know this is we're not in despair. We're not we're, This is not disturbing us. This is with purpose. And everything that we live for is to be in His image and to manifest the beauty of His nature. And we are His body. And we bear about in our bodies, we're His body. And bear about in us that same Spirit that had His side open. And I just thought it was interesting that it would say, We, we are trouble on every side. And yet, we're not. This isn't, this doesn't drive us to despair and freaking out because oh why are we going through trials we know what we're going through and we know why we're going through it and it's and it's for his purpose and um, 
I, I wrote, it, uh, it is worth it to us. We manifest the treasure in this vessel. We demonstrate kind in this vessel, in these vessels. And when, when Jesus sees that happening in his body and in us, and in his body, this is his body, Jesus just, I, I think he just looks at us and he goes, I love ribs. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, let's close with a word of prayer. Father, thank you that Jesus' heart is such that he, he longs after more of us being with his heart. And he rejoices at even the slightest manifestations of that nature within us. And that we are so privileged to have been brought into something that is more than just Christian and therefore fighting to get out of this world so that we can be happy in heaven. That we've been brought into something that is Him. We've been brought back into His side. We've been brought back into oneness. We've been brought back as truly still, right now, bone of His bone in Him, not outside of Him. And that we can bear about on every side those things with one purpose, to manifest forth and to show forth that likeness of kind to Him. If nobody else sees it, we can do it and bring joy to your heart. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen.